While we go about our usual everyday lives, a gigantic monster slumbers in the border area of Switzerland and France. However, this is not a demonic monster, but a technical colossus with a circumference of 27 kilometers, the Large Hadron Collider. Located at the European Nuclear Research Center, CERN, at a depth of around 100 meters, the scientists use the most powerful particle accelerator of all time to decipher the building blocks of the world and their interactions. And indeed, the sensational new discovery that was recently made with the help of the LHC reminds us once again what incredible mysteries the universe still hides from us. The scientific find has such a fleeting character that some experts compare it to a ghost. You want to know what the researchers revealed? Then stay tuned and make sure to watch our video to the end. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more exciting videos. A Bumpy Start It is September 10, 2008, when a new chapter in nuclear research begins. But before the Large Hadron Collider could finally be put into operation, there was a long way to go. More than 10,000 scientists from over 100 countries were involved in the planning and construction of the monstrous apparatus. In addition, the ambitious project cost 3 billion euros. When the day finally came when the LHC began its scientific service, the excitement in the ranks of the experts was correspondingly high. However, the start of the particle accelerator resulted in an absolute fiasco. Since a welded seam could not withstand the load, a tank in the cooling system was destroyed. The explosion, in turn, displaced a 30-ton magnet by half a meter. The experts needed another whole year to repair the damage and make the LHC functional. Since then, however, the Large Hadron Collider has been running as desired and has already helped us enormously in revealing some hidden secrets of the invisible particle world. But what are particle accelerators anyway? And what are they used for? Revolutionary Insights a basic theory has existed for several decades that is able to describe all elementary particles and their interactions, and thus allows us to trace the development of the cosmos back to shortly after the Big Bang, the standard model of particle physics. However, this raises other questions that go back much closer to the birth of the universe and the laws of nature. And this is exactly where the Large Hadron Collider comes into play. In the belly of the gigantic ring tunnel, protons or lead nuclei are accelerated in opposite directions to almost the speed of light and brought to collision. As soon as these collide at very high energy, conditions are created that are similar to those immediately after the Big Bang. The experts then take a close look at the particles that are formed as part of these collisions. For this purpose, special detectors have been installed at four points along the tunnel. In this way, scientists are able to glimpse new, very high-energy regimes that could not previously be observed directly. Worries and Fears However, it should not be taken for granted that we follow the experiments being carried out with the help of the Large Hadron Collider with a mixture of fascination and sincere interest. Before the LHC was put into operation in 2008, there was a fear that the particle accelerator could trigger an apocalyptic end of the world. According to some theoretical models, the LHC is capable of creating tiny black holes that would engulf the Earth at lightning speed. However, experts keep emphasizing that the LHC does not pose any danger. Although it is theoretically possible for microscopic holes to form, they would immediately burst out again and explicitly not eat their fill of our blue home planet. Of Quarks and Hadrons before we take a closer look at the CERN discovery, we should first acquire some basic knowledge. In this regard, a central question needs to be clarified. What are quarks? Well, these elementary particles are no less than the fundamental components of matter. However, we are by no means dealing with invisible loners here. In truth, quarks are never observed in isolation, but always in the form of composite particles, the so-called hadrons. These, in turn, include the protons and neutrons, the components of the atomic nuclei. In the standard 
standard model of particle physics, quarks embody the only elementary particles that are subject to all four fundamental interactions. Specifically, these are the strong and weak interactions, gravitation and electromagnetism. However, a quark is not just a quark. Here, scientists distinguish between six different types, which are called flavors. While protons and neutrons are up and down, quarks, charm, top, strange, and bottom quarks still exist. The components of the atomic nucleus are made up of those quarks that have by far the lowest mass. Heavier elementary particles, on the other hand, only occur in extremely short-lived hadrons, such as those produced in the Large Hadron Collider at the Nuclear Research Center, CERN. Three New Particles for a long time, hadrons only appeared in pairs of two or three. In the more recent research past, however, the scientists were able to expand the ranks of particle assemblies by some exciting members. Accordingly, the researchers tracked down various tetra and pedaquarks, and even a hexaquark. In fact, the CERN scientists are comparing the current time with the revolutionary epoch of the 1950s and 1960s, when the experts encountered a veritable hadron particle zoo. These, in turn, should lay the foundation for our standard model of particle physics. A few months ago, the scientists announced that they had found three more exotic particles. Accordingly, the analysis of the LHCb detectors revealed the unique signatures of three particles that were previously completely unknown. The first discovery is a pentaquark that contains, among other things, two heavy charm quarks. At the same time, this is the first known pentaquark that also has a strange quark. In fact, the decoding of the particle find could help to understand the characteristics of such compounds more precisely than ever. So far, we still do not know in detail how the quark coupling works in such structures. On one hand, it is conceivable that the elementary particles are equally strongly connected. On the other hand, it could also be a matter of rather loose accumulations of pairs and trios. However, the bulk of the new discovery suggests that we are dealing with an entity composed of two subunits. The second particle discovery at the LHC concerns the very first known tetraquark pair. Both components consist of a strange antiquark and a charm quark, while one of the partners also has an up and down quark, the other party has a down quark and an antiquark. It is very likely that we are dealing here with so-called isospin partners. This means that the components represent two states of a quantum mechanical system, but the same applies in this case. How the quark coupling works in detail remains to be found out in the future. Ghost Particles the fact that neutrinos are also referred to as ghost particles among experts is primarily due to the fact that they hardly ever interact with other particles and are therefore extremely difficult and extremely expensive to detect. Without us noticing anything, about 100 billion neutrinos pass through every square centimeter of our body every second. The electrically neutral elementary particles are produced in the core fire of stars, in explosive supernova, by cosmic rays and radioactive decay, as well as in particle accelerators and nuclear reactors. But despite their ubiquity, neutrinos are extremely difficult to capture. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. Some of the most well-known experiments to detect neutrinos, such as the Japanese Super Kamiokande detector or the ice cube detector in Antarctica, used so-called Cherenkov radiation to detect neutrinos. This occurs when charged particles pass through a light permeable medium, provided they are faster than the light propagating in the corresponding medium. Just as a plane breaking the sound barrier makes a loud bang, so a particle traveling faster than light through a medium like water creates a faint blue glow. With this, the researchers can in turn identify the traces of particle byproducts that arise when neutrinos hit an atomic nucleus. Groundbreaking Observation while such experiments are excellent for detecting the signature of neutrinos streaming from the sun through the Earth, they provide little information about the types of neutrinos formed when particles collide in particle accelerators. In order to track down these special neutrinos, the experts have designed a new detector called FASERNU. This in turn consists of dense plates of lead and tungsten, between which there are several layers of emulsion. First, the neutrinos collide with the atomic nuclei in the metal plates, producing particle byproducts. 
The layers of emulsion then react with each other, imprinting the outlines of the particles as they fly through. Finally, by analyzing these particle signatures, the scientists found that some tracks were produced by neutrinos. They were even able to find out which type or generation neutrinos it was. Basically, we distinguish between electron, muon, and tau neutrinos, with each generation consisting of a neutrino and its antineutrino. Scientists have never before been able to detect these elementary particles in a particle accelerator. However, this exciting discovery should not only be the beginning of a new research journey, in the meantime, the physicists have started building an even larger version of the detector, which not only reacts much more sensitively to the ghost particles, but is also able to tell the difference between neutrinos and their antimatter counterparts. In this way, more than 10,000 neutrino interactions will soon be recorded and decoded in detail. However, this is not the only exciting field of research that the experts are currently working on. The Phaser team is also working on an experiment that serves to detect hypothetical dark protons. According to the experts, these could be closely intertwined with dark matter, the mysterious substance that makes up an estimated 85% of the matter in the cosmos. Trinity Test there are many other experiments that could have dire consequences if things were to go wrong. It is July 16, 1945, when man's destructive power reaches a new dimension. As part of the Trinity test, a nuclear weapon explosion was caused for the first time in history. At that time, those responsible decided to detonate the so-called plutonium implosion bomb on a 30-meter high tower and that despite the urgent warning from the experts. Enrico Fermi, one of the most important nuclear physicists of his time, feared that the detonation of the weapon of mass destruction could bring about the end of the world. So the Nobel Prize winner thought it possible that the massive explosion would cause a chain reaction that would ignite the entire Earth's atmosphere. Fortunately, Fermi was to be wrong on this point. At 5.30 a.m., the bomb was detonated, having a yield of 21 kilotons of TNT equivalent, ripping a 330-meter-wide crater in the desert floor. In fact, the pressure wave could still be felt at a distance of 160 kilometers. The atomic mushroom towered 12 kilometers in the air. However, the U.S. military was keen to keep the test run secret, and so the Trinity test was officially disguised as an ammunition dump explosion. However, this also meant that the residents in the area received no warnings. The following air, water, and food contaminations were not investigated further. It was not until August 6, 1945, the day the atomic bomb fell on Hiroshima, that the true background of the experiment was revealed. From then on, scientists tried to push the limits of their nuclear warheads even further. Such was the case in 1952 with Operation Tumbler Snapper. Back then, three atomic weapons were dropped from airplanes to gain new information about the effects of the blast waves. There are currently around 14,000 nuclear warheads on our planet, enough to wipe out life on Earth multiple times. The Opening of Hell during the Cold War, the superpowers of East and West tried to outdo each other in every conceivable way. Regardless of whether it was military, scientific, or political, each party to the conflict wanted to prove that it was vastly superior to the other. This competition sometimes produced unusual results. The advance into the depths was no exception. In the course of the Kola Well, the Soviets penetrated an unbelievable 12,262 meters into the ground. Since 1979, the gaping abyss has been the deepest hole in the world. Officially, the drilling was carried out for research purposes. According to this, those responsible wanted to gain new insights into the world's crust and find out to what extent water and gases occur at such a great depth. At the beginning of the 1990s, however, the work was stopped. This was due to the technical complications that the teams were confronted with. The machines simply gave up the ghost in the unexpectedly high temperatures of over 200 degrees Celsius. Unofficially, however, it is rumored that the demolition of the well had a completely different background. The workers are said to have pushed open the gates of hell. Rumor has it that microphones were lowered into the borehole at the time. 
picking up a multitude of blood-curdling screams. According to this myth, we are fortunate that the government refrained from drilling into hell any further, so the arrival of the devil is delayed indefinitely. All right, folks, now it's your turn. What do you think about the exciting experiments being carried out at the Nuclear Research Center, CERN? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. And with that, thanks for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.